corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Net present value NPV with negative future cash flow. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we are in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, populating that information into the blue area on the right-hand side. We have the net present value, the NPV calculation, similar to what we've seen in prior presentation. The thing that is different here is that one of the future cash flows is actually negative. So that could happen, for example, if we have some cost into the future, we have to overhaul equipment or something like that. We could have a negative cost in the future. And the question then being, well, is that going to throw off our net present value calculation? Answer, no, not even if we, if we set up this, the system to be correct. But we need to be aware of that, of course, so that when we do our net present value calculation, we pick that up properly. So that's going to be it. We have the investment, same kind of scenario. We have a down payment, some kind of investment. Could be an equipment, could be a project, could be an, an investment that we have initial down payment in order to generate revenue into the future, multiple years into the future. Therefore, we would like to take into consideration time value of money. Our cost of capital, we're going to say is 14%, meaning we have the money, we could invest in something at this point in time, but we have lots of things we could invest in and we only want to invest if our opportunity cost is met. And we're saying that's going to be the 14%. So if this project is getting back more than the 14, we may invest in it. And if not, we'll put our money elsewhere. So we then have the cash flows, which typically are going to be the future cash flows. That's why we put the 200,000 down to get future inflows of money into the future. And that is the case for year one, two, three. But year four, we have an outflow. So we're expecting something to happen in year four. Possibly we need to overhaul the equipment or something like that some big cost possibly happening in one year. So that's going to mess up our kind of calculation. After that, we're thinking there's going to be a jump in the income and then continuing on with the income to six years out into the future. So let's do our present value calculation. As long as we set this up in a similar process in Excel, that negative amount shouldn't mess us up at all. So we're just going to say this is going to be zero, one, two. I'm going to then Select these three cells and auto fill them on down. Auto fill them on down. Dragging fills handle down. Going to center it so it looks a little nicer. Alignment and center. And then let's just pull over this series of payments just like there are over here as well as that initial investment. Anything that's an outflow is going to be negative. Inflow is positive. Negative 200,000 because that's an outflow. Also note that if you look at someone else's kind of calculation of this, you might then want to... Uh, calculate the inflows and outflows together as one group. So you might see this represented or it might be useful to represent the outflows together, inflows together, and then net the two out. But in calculating it, especially when using Excel, it's nice just to go to by year by year and just pick up which inflows and outflows are there. That could be good for presentation purposes as well because you're basically saying what is happening on a year by year kind of basis. So that's up to you on presentation purposes, but we're then going to say this equals the 47,000. And then I just want to mirror all this stuff. I could copy it and paste it over there, but I think it's easier to reference with a, with a cell reference so that if my data changes, I can then change the data uh, and, and have a whole new worksheet that way. It's good practice. So I'm going to drag this on down. This is actually only six payments. And then I'm not have a seven. This is the total. That's where the total should go. That's what I should have put there instead of a seven. And then let's put this on a line. And I'm going to make that left align. I'm going to underline this one. So note we have that negative 48,000 there. Not a problem because it's a negative number. It's an outflow. That's okay. So I'm just going to sum this up, sum it up. And that would be 117,000 net positive over six years uh, if we don't take into consider time value of money. But like it's six years. So we got to take into consideration time value of money. And I want to return greater than the 14% because we could put our money elsewhere. So let's do our calculation. We'll do it for this one 200,000, even though it's going to be the same number to have all of this column uniform so that we could copy it down if we so choose, which we won't do first, but we'll do later. So this is going to be negative present value shift nine. The rate is going to be the 14%. If I wanted to copy it down because that is outside the table, I would need to make it an absolute reference, which we will not do now, but we will do later. Comma, number of periods, zero. 
comma, because it's not an annuity, another comma, that's why, because it's not an annuity, future value, the 200,000, same number, because it's zero periods out. Let's do it again, negative present value, shift nine, we got the rate, 14%, comma, number of periods is now one period out, comma, comma, because it's not an annuity, but present value of 147,000, one year out is 41 to 28, and the current period, if we discount it using our 14,000 cost of capital calculation, let's do it again, present value, shift nine, rate, we're gonna be picking up the 14%, comma, number of periods, two, comma, comma, Future value, 62, bringing it back two years to get us to the 47,706. Let's do it two more times so we can pick up that negative number. Negatives, present value, shift nine, rate, 14%, comma, number of periods, three, comma, comma, future value, 56. Let's do it one more time and then we'll use our autofill to do this. You might be saying like, why don't you just autofill it down? Because, you know, we're practicing the present value formula, but we'll then practice copying it down shortly this is the one we've been worried about because it's an outflow does that mess us up at all not no it really doesn't because we'll just do the same thing and we'll present value the outflow which isn't going to happen until the future so same kind of process negative present value of the rate 14 percent comma number of periods is going to be four comma comma future value it's an outflow but i'm still going to present value it back and that means it's the outflow, rather than it being worth 48,000, is only worth the 28,420 because that outflow isn't going to happen for the four years from today. Same concept that we're going to go through. Now, I'm going to use the autofill this time to copy it down. So I'm actually going to delete all these and say, why don't we just do this the easy way, deleting these, autofill this first one down. To autofill it down, we got to make sure that the thing outside the table, the 14%, is absolutized so that we can ask Excel, Excel, when I copy it down, would you please leave that cell as it is? And we tell Excel to do that kindly by saying, putting our cursor in B5 and selecting F4 on the keyboard, putting a dollar sign before the B, dollar sign before the five. That's us asking Excel, Excel, would you mind terribly if when we copied it down that you don't move down the 14%? And that's us asking that question. And Excel's like, my pleasure. And we copy it down using the autofill now, autofilling it down. And then double check and see if, if Excel did not copy it down. See, we asked nicely and Excel kept that cell there, whereas all the other cells, they moved down relatively. We asked nicely by putting a dollar sign before the B and the 5. Now, note, we only need a mixed reference, but an absolute reference works well and it's probably easier to under, you know, just to do. Font group underline. Let's sum this up now. Let's see what the end result will be. Is this going to be a positive or negative number? If it's positive, we might accept this job. If it's negative, we won't because the hurdle rate would not have been cleared. The cost of capital wouldn't have been cleared. The 14% wouldn't be returned. Summing it up, what's it going to be? Enter. Negative. Barely negative. But that means that we're not getting back our 14% on this particular job. And if we have other jobs... We, that we could get our 14% return and we had to put our money one place or the other, we're going to put it in the other job. So we're saying this one's close, but we think we can possibly get another more money elsewhere. It's not clear in our hurdle rate. It's not clear in the cost of capital. Anything over zero would have done it. And you might think, you might think well, if it was zero, then, or anything like one, that, that would be like I only earned one dollar. That's not the case. That this cost of capital is includes what we want basically as a profit in it we want a 14 percent return because we're including the cost of opportunity cost typically the cost of us putting our money elsewhere so anything that's positive means we're we're getting that 14 percent obviously we would also want to have included in here the effect of interest or inflation the purchasing power of the money going down but this is this is the cost that includes so anything that's going to be positive more positive would be better that would mean that we clear that 14 by more that return by more and then we can use the irr the internal rate of return to see what the percent rate of return would be in that case but here we're trying to clear the 14 percent and so anything positive would do so anything negative would not and this one did not barely close but no